Well, who is this sneezing falcon? Well, he was the landlord who had rented Hashishan and his alchemist bad boys from Gazvia and his castle. Remember? Ten years earlier, and where Hashishan and his crew invented the first hashish oil extraction apparatus and they had the big double barrel ready and everybody gathered there the sneezing falcon his whole entourage this was going to be a major breakthrough in persian hashish history and what happened <laughs> yeah exploded Look at a boss. I told you to keep the campfire outside. Hashish oil, open flame. Don't do that again. We got to get out of here. That's how she's showing. Yeah. It burned the sneezing falcon's ancestral castle down into a mud cake with a little straw sticking out the side. Uh, that's why today, uh, Falcon, oh yeah, uh, he becomes absolutely furious when he hears, you know, pss, 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 you know, be almost behind his back. Uh, Hashishan, fabulous wealth and empire building. His old nemesis, the grand master of the assassins, well, Falcon chokes on his uh, pilaf made with sticky rice, the Cambodian recipe. When he hears about the what? further expansion of the assassins into Syria, the Levant, he flattened his enemies out and Levanted that whole area. Assassin's stronghold strung all the way down to Syria and sniffing up towards a slouching panther toward Jerusalem. Well, he has to get his two Goliath bodyguards to hoist him upside down and thump him <laughs> repeatedly <laughs> on the back to get that clump of sticky rice to out of his gullet which makes the falcon sneeze yeah wild story sweeping through these mud villages in Khorasan ah, ha, 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 south eastern Persia yeah, the spectacular murder spree of the assassins against the Knights of St. John with their impenetrable uh, world headquarters on the island of Rhodos. Remember? Rhodos? Rhodes? This is where I'm telling you the story from? On my last sunset evening, after 12 marvelous days, <sighs> communing with my cave and where Goddess Earth, he jumped out inside the cave naked. That's how the whole story started right there. Remember? Well, Falcon spews his half chewed food and and <laughs> he really messes up his salt and pepper beard by doing that enraged he jealously rants about the old man who he had rented his castle to 10 years earlier and you know what enough is an 
It was a <sighs> enough. High time, Falcon, Rackins. You know what? Hashishan never paid him the two hundred gold ducats with a picture of Malik Shah of Persia on top and an eagle looking up tight on the back. Why does everybody abuse eagles and stamp them into metal coins? Give the bird a break. You know. Put some centipedes on there. Or fire ant. Something that, you know, you should stamp out. He thinks it's time to knock this. What does he think he is? Hashishan, a rock star? Knock him off that goddamn rock. All right. Showtime. He's going to do something about it, okay? So he gets uh, 400 camels uh, uh, together, and he kind of galumphs, galumphs in a curve toward the Caspian Sea. Well, he goes through Machete. Big town Machete is, huh? Uh, yeah, and anyway, he ends up at the Caspian Sea, and what does he do? Asks lots of probing questions. He's really a pest, really. But, you know, he shouts out, uh, free hookahs for everybody in the, in the dance, and, you know, what, they'll listen to him. You know, more hashish, Falcon? What, what, what were you saying? He goes all the way, like, rushed. Babool. Probing questions, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where is Hashishan and where is his rock? It's not that complicated. I need two facts and I need them now. Yes, it is from Mazari Sharif, my Hashish. Um, what's that, Earthy? We need a twist in the plot because the camels are galumph galumphing and everybody's going to sleep. Twist in the plot. Well, let me tell you one thing. This story changes really quickly, and you're, you're going to be like, what happened? Musa? Remember Musa, one of the four muleteers of Karamabad? <laughs> he betrays Hashi Shan, the guy that set him up. You know, his golden goose. Just turn him over to the butcher. All right? Cook that goose. Betrayed? That greedy muleteer. <laughs> he informs on the exact whereabouts of the old man. And <laughs> what happens? Hundred silver ducats get thrown down next to the hookah on the carpet. Like, oh, Musa, you must have dropped this. This must be yours. They use old tricks, these Persians. Good thing the Persian sky was full of stars that night. People were all looking up at the stars, huh? Not paying attention to the bribe going down in the hookah lounge. Greedy muleteer. I mean, how many mules can one man, you know, not be happy with? But, yeah, greed, huh? He figures, Musa. Well, he's got mules. He can't use those to get up over the Shalambar Pass. He's going to need camels. Who's he going to get the camels from? <laughs> he doesn't know anybody around here. Especially, he's a Sunni. We're in the Shiite area. Hello? You're out of your neighborhood, kid? Well, that will give him a private harem. All that money he's going to make. Huh? You know, he's got his eye on this old uh, derelict minaret in Gazvan. He figures like he can 
uh, redesign it, fashion it up a little bit, import some stuff from Kajikistan, you know, so samovars and rugs. Well, rugs, they got too many rugs. Let's make a sand pit in there for a change. Swinging God's van could be in his future. He's with a penthouse up in the minaret. Mm -hmm. And he's not going to be calling down calls to prayer from his penthouse. It's going to be calls to <laughs> ride the camel, so to speak. Okay. Wiley. Musa. He arranges for the sneezing falcon to get 400 camels. Okay. He's got a piece of sand in his eye. Make it 401 camel. He could use the extra pocket money. Ah. And, uh, yeah. Now, what did he do? He traded in his mules and he got camels from his uh, second cousin removed from the pirate ship of the Kamaramabad of pirate rice. They had to remove the second cousin because... He, he was allergic to water, and he would not go to the hammam and you know, remove him. Keep him at a distance. That's why camels like him, because he smells like a camel. Well, you know, mules are the only animals you can get up that flinty. You've heard about the salad bar pass a lot right well you just like hitch up your camel and uh pull you j just pull up an ottoman to the to the buffet and get all the non pilaf and especially those juicy kebabs they drip all over you and you can wipe your nose later and still think you're having lunch It really wasn't that difficult, okay? So, the Sneezing Falcons reorganized, yeah, like in an afternoon. He's got 2,000 troops, huh? He can't, like, sit around forever. And they head into the interior on the other side of the Salamander Pass. Slither up there, huh? Like a little caravansaria uh, of lizards. And who's in the avant-garde? Musa, the traitor. <laughs> That's a twisted as plot as you can just... It's not enough. What? More dramatic tension? No, I've never uh, personally taken a drama class. What do they do in there? Create a problem, then solve it. Dramatic tension? Or otherwise it's snooze village? Dramatic tension. Um, oh! You know, I almost forgot. Uh, the sneezing falcon, he encounters an unexpected hardship. Uh, well, what happened is, like, he grew up, like, right from a baby. And he never left it until now. The Great Salt Desert. The home region of Khorasan. Ah, does not permit wildflowers to grow. Sodium chloride, wildflowers, forget it. You won't find sodium chloride in your local nursery fertilizer department. They're not that stupid. Well, now, he, he, he's out of his territory. And he, he treks up the Shalambar Pass. 
and what is all this strange flora around? He just doesn't recognize a thing, and he discovers, unfortunately, it's, oh, it's way too late, that he is allergic to what? Uh, bushes? Trees? Wildflowers? Herbs? In fact, everything except salt. Salt will not irritate him at all. Such a salty dog, that sneezing bird. Well, he's got four days to go. Okay, Karamabad to uh, the secret rock, which won't be so secret really soon. You got four days of that? Through all that freaked out flora? 400 mules behind him, all depending on him to do what? Lead? He's got a hack of track, baby. We're talking thorny grass, larkspur, yellow tulips, roses, jasmine. Hedges of Hawthorne, mulberry trees, <laughs> bushes of pomegranates, Persia pomegranates, you know, metaphor, stick together like the seeds within a pomegranate. I mean, it's in their culture and they can't get rid of it. It's too many seeds, not like the seedless grapes. You know, that's why they went that way. The seedless lavender... <laughs> And not only that, they got to go through orchards of pear and apricots. And oh no, they're blossoming with spring buds. The whole trees are ablaze with... <sighs> then what? They have to slog through fields of rice? They get the ankles deep in ricey water? Lost in rows of corn? Which way you go? Third row to the right, head for the river. What? I lost half my mules. Spaced out in the pomegranates. And watch out for walnut trees. They're hard. Don't run your mule into a walnut tree. Inhaling, Falcon. The seeds, spores, pollen in the air, everywhere from poplar, wild juniper, and sycamore trees. It's enough to make him sick. More sick? Well, the ever obliging Musa, right? He's a guy just, you know, cash cow right there, huh? Uh, he has four mules. Outfitted with fresh handkerchiefs from Harat, Afghanistan. Fine cotton, Afghani shirts, nice white embroidered shirts. Make handkerchiefs out of them, short little class. Okay. Mm. Well, finally, Musa guides him to the base of the rock itself. Oh my God, Falcon looks up there. Oh no. And his eyes are watering. And he looks up, all the water, and his eyes drip down into his salt and pepper bee. And he's wheezing and sneezing and nose dripping. Eesh. Well, when the secret agents. They're all kids, like between four and nine, <laughs> running around the Kaiser Khan Valley. <laughs> What's this? Anything strange? Let's knock them out. <laughs> Maybe the old man will give us a chunk of. Don't tell mom. Um. They inform Falcon of the sneezing weakness of his enemy. 
<laughs> so, the Grand Master calls in to his Bibliothèque Erratique <laughs> none other than Roxana. <sighs> his secret agent, Femme Fatale, this means she'll get you, Fatal. Mm. Um, and like they, they hatch a plan in the bibliotheque. She's going to go down to Falcon's camp, seduce him, and make sure he's always surrounded by fresh cut plants and flowers, just to keep him. All the time, huh? No focus. With, you can't sneeze and focus at the same time. Well, how's she going to do that? She says, look, Hashishan, Ibsaba, I have my ways. I have my charms. He's going to be, have his nose in plant pollen, <laughs> one way or the other. Well. So Falcon's just like hanging out in his tent, you know, sneezing, sniveling, wheezing, eyes running, just kind of doing his thing now, trying to get used to his lower lifestyle situation. Because he's low and whew, I just shown his high. Mm-hmm. Well, in comes Roxana, and uh, she just, without even anything, she just like takes all her clothes and sits on his lap. She strips off his pantalones, and uh, yeah, makes sure he remains pollinated. You know what? That's enough of Roxana. I want to get back to the military uh, protracted siege part of the story. It's like a little bit too 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 salacious for me. Just this one time. All right, back to the protracted siege. Uh, Falcon, uh, all the way up to, from Shudder Khan to Kaiser Khan, uh, he terrorizes all of the local inhabitants at the base of the rock, and he shouts out his demands. He shouts out to the tower, I want my 200 dukas of back rent paid, and nobody's coming down until I get taken care of. Do I make myself clear? Well, the old man and his fidai um, respond with a golden shower from the top of the tower, assassin power, And that shuts his mouth. And he's disgusted. You know, to be treated like that? Well, the thing is, the rock uh, of Alamut is uh, impregnable. Impregnable? That means don't fuck with the rock because you're not going to get Hashishan pregnant. Uh, yeah, kids, uh, the loyal children of Hashishan. He's the godfather, okay? He's the Marlon Brando of the Alamut Valley. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, um... 
You know, in the old man, he doesn't even need these kids that much because uh, from his awesome view, from the observation tower of Alamut, what, what does Alamut mean in Farsi? That's the farcical language of the Persian people. Could you give me a farcical on that? Because every time I, my spell checker keeps changing it into the Alamo. And I don't remember, want to remember the goddamn Alamo. I want Alamut. Alamut. Means, in farcical, the nest of the ego. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh man, he, he can see like 50 kilometers away all the way to the Chala Pass, the last pass before you come down into <laughs> outrageous kebab dripping God's Vin with the camel track in the center of town where they fork out and galumph galumph to Mesopotamia, Ephesus. Consider the nobly. It's called Byzantium. Originally, the Romans originally settled what is now Constantinople. You know your history, your, your Turkish Ottoman history. Byzantium, the eastern wing of the Roman Empire, after the Goths like chopped it all up and they had to split up. You got the Roman scene, you got the Byzantine scene, like Byzantine art. Um, what? I think it's over here. Um, yeah. <sighs> why? Why are the eyes of Hashishan? Why are, why are they so bloodshot? <laughs> I wanted to give you an easy, you know, toss out. Because if you think of the answer, it makes you feel good inside. Because you didn't do that good in school. I sent you home one time because your clothes were too scruffy. In every New Age workshop, it just it comes up, up right up at the front. Fashion crime as a kid. You got busted for it. Yeah. He smiles when he watches the look at that pathetic campsite of his pesky former landlord. What could be more boring? The landlord with the runny sinuses. And a rash of hives across his back. 